let us now wrap this driven RL circuit. I know you might be getting bored by now, but once we are through this, and I assure you that we are going to uh, get to some very simple waters. So let us look at this thing again. So the response of a driven RL circuit was something like this. I have taken the V0 over R out. So this is the term and we can see that at t is equal to zero, this term is zero. So we have zero current. And as t becomes infinity, e raised to the power minus infinity is zero, this term becomes one. So we have V0 over R. So let us try to plot this to understand the behavior of the circuit. So against time, let us plot this current. Now this, this term is a decaying exponent, but this is a constant. So basically we are going, and we know that it starts from zero. And as uh, time becomes large, it ultimately saturates at this value V naught over R. So we are going to get something like this. And guess what? It basically saturates at this point. This is a rising exponent. So if, if we draw a tangent, the, the slope with which it starts rising, if we draw a tangent at this point, then the time at which it, it will reach the, max, the uh, saturation value is what is known as the time constant. For the circuit that is equal to L over R. For an RL circuit, it is L over R. And in five times this time, so two, three, four, five, in roughly five time constants, we say that the circuit enters in steady state. So a steady state starts from here and goes up to infinity. And this part is the, the transient part. Let me write that uh, expression once again to separate the steady state part and the transient part. So this is the transient part, this is the steady state part. And this uh, can tell you um, the same story that we understood from the natural response part earlier on. So in one time constant, because here it is not decaying to zero, it is going to saturate to some value. And we know the behavior of a time constant, what does that do? So in one time constant, whatever is the final saturation value the this function is going to rise to 63.2 percent of that value so basically it is the same story so let me let me uh, recap everything that we have learned about the inductors especially one very important thing so one thing is Whenever we encounter any RL circuit, any RL circuit, and we want to find a response, something we want to find about that circuit, let us say it is a function of time, say it's a current or voltage. Usually in RL circuits, it's current. We will later see in RC circuits, it's voltage. Because in for an inductor, the current is a, uh, is a variable that uh, that gives information on the state of the circuit. So suppose we want to find some response. The response is definitely going to have a part that matches the forcing function and a part that matches the natural response style. So how to find this, uh, this forcing function part? we put t is equal to zero. So when we put t is equal to, sorry, t is equal to infinity. How do we find this part? That is when the circuit uh, enters the steady state. So in steady state, the exponents, etc., have have uh, become zero. And whatever is there is a constant. So how to find this thing? 
put t is equal to infinity at t is equal to infinity we can understand from the behavior of the circuit that how the circuit is going to behave so let us say this thing or a better way to write it is let us say this is f at infinity so the overall response is the, the value at infinity we know how to solve that and this natural response thing in the previous video we saw that the natural response thing would be uh, how, how to compute this one so what we do is we put t is equal to 0 so in, in the in the forced form part or the steady state part we put t is equal to infinity and in the natural response part we put t is equal to infinity and how do we find how do we find uh, how, how do we do this so this is the complete response in here we put t is equal to 0 what we get the function value at 0 plus and then this part which is the function at infinity and then fn t so what do we get fn t is equal to sorry fn at uh, basically i have skipped a small thing so let me add that small bit for you and then we can uh, discuss this again uh, that is that this fn will always be of this form Th this part i missed that f and t will always be a constant and e raised power minus t over tau tau for rl circuit is l over r and the issue that would be left would be finding a so when we put t is equal to 0 e raised power 0 is 1 so f n at 0 when we put t is equal to 0 we can find this thing this way so this f infinity is a constant So ft is f infinity plus the natural part. The natural uh, response part is like this. So here if we put t equal to 0, we get this thing a. So this thing is basically a and this thing is f of infinity. And therefore, we found that a is equal to fn, uh, fn, uh, sorry, 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 sorry. This is f at 0 plus. So fn at 0 is a, f infinity, this is, so a, what is a? a is f, uh, f at 0 plus the initial value minus f at infinity. So what do we get here? ft is equal to, this is very important, please take a good and clear note of this thing. So the whole response would be equal to the value of that thing at infinity plus a and what is a we have just found that f of 0 plus minus the value of the response at infinity e raised power minus t over tau this is what we were aiming at now let us call this a general solution this is how rl and rc circuits are going to be solved Knowing this general solution, we don't need to solve everything over and over again. Let us solve the circuit again. Okay. We had a fallen camera. Let us... Um, I hope that I am able to get it back properly so now knowing uh, this general solution let us solve that circuit again so let us do it here so what we have now we are going to solve it like we don't know anything about this circuit and it is for the first time that we are trying to solve it oh i have drawn the inductor there it does not matter so now at t is equal to 0 there is a switch that is going to close so now uh, we are not going to write the kvl equation 
no differential equation no solution only this general solution so what we have been told with told uh, uh, is that to find the uh, the current so we need to find the value of expression for current so here general solution says whatever you want to find find its value at infinity then find its initial value which is usually given minus sometimes we have to find this from the knowledge of the circuit before the switching uh, takes place and then again the value at infinity and then e raised to power minus t over tau now for this circuit for an rl circuit we we know tau is equal to l over r so here uh, at infinity we will come to this thing that an inductor behaves as a short circuit so after this which has closed and a long time has passed this becomes short and we know that it is equal to it at infinity would be v not over r so it would be v not over r plus what is its initial value its initial value is 0 and its final value is v not over r e raised to power minus t over l over r which is r over l so what do we get here it is equal to v not over r minus v not over r e raised to power minus r over l t now where is the difficulty in this i hope you you can understand that this is very easy try to understand how we have reached this general solution and the general solution is going to help us in in these circuits so for example in the next video i am not going to do anything about the uh, capacitor i'm not going to write kvl i'm not going to do anything of the sort i'm just going to use the general solution and let us see what we come uh, come up to